Morning all. We've just uh, been messing around with the mics. You have to let me know if you can hear me okay. I've got a problem with the mics. Always a problem. Just scanning back. Morning Barry. Morning Roy. Morning John. Evening Bob. Hello Malcolm. Morning David. Morning Mark. Morning Colin. Hello Leroy. Ah, oh, morning Mr. Walt. I'm out of camera at the moment. I'm sort of reaching over for a microphone. Morning Steve. Catching up. Uh, morning Woody Dude. Morning Miss T. Morning Leslie. Morning Cyril. Morning Philip. Hello Four Kings, hello Hodge, morning Lee, morning Adrian, morning Fred, good to see you, well I don't see you obviously, morning David, morning Nick, morning Malcolm, morning Paul, right I think I've caught up with everybody, uh, we've got all sorts of adjustments going on here and I'm now being past the dreaded iPad. I don't know what's going on here. Videos. Um, Turn that down somehow. Where's the volume? I can use these things well. Skip ads. Right, there we go. Okay, who have I missed? Hold on, back to the old mouse for the chat. And uh, yeah, let's catch up. I mean, I've got you, I've got you. Morning, Robert. Morning, Steve. Morning, Martin. Morning, YV. Morning, Elena. Morning, Pat. Morning, Ian. Morning, Steve. Nigel, morning Paul, morning all. It's, I think I've caught up with the chat. If I haven't caught up with the chat, let me know. Uh, morning Andrew. I've got what I can do on the mic. I had it rigged in through a camera and it started feeding. It was all right in the week and today he decided to feed back. I've messed around with settings, but it ain't really worked. I've just found me ruler. Been looking for that, looking for that everywhere. Where was it? Back pocket of me smock. Unbelievable. I need strings on everything, and then I could have them around my neck so I don't lose them. Chilly old start here in sunny Kent. Chilly old start. Morning, Stuart. Morning, Stephen. Morning Mike, morning Vicky, morning everybody, morning, 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 morning to anybody I've missed, morning Derek, morning Don, morning Patrick, I keep uh, flipping around and doing this, morning Paul, uh, I'm trying to check the chat, look at the camera, Check over here, see what's going on over here. Looking at that, looking over here. I've got more kit here than I need for. I think I might get rid of it all and just have an iPhone. That'd be easy. New microphone. That's the first order of the day when I finished here. Now I'm noticing I've got a bit of a greeny tinge. Didn't have that earlier. Now it's come up. Bit rate on the uh, stream dropped. Broadband's excellent. Dropped. It's come back up. I just, uh, this live streaming lark is something to be desired. 
Morning Beach, Bam. Morning Bez. Might go back to filming it and then just editing it and putting it out and making out it's live. I could f stream you. Oh, that'd do it, wouldn't it? I could film it the day before, set it out as a live stream and just play it back to you. That'd be good. And trouble is the chat. Well, I could have a microphone only, talk over the chat. That might do it. Yeah, there's an idea, eh? Full of ideas, me. Bloody useless, most of them. Never mind. Get a headset. Yeah, I was thinking about a headset. Yeah, trouble is, I've got like a really nice mic there, but don't work with the A10. Didn't play nicely. My um, Bob. Uh, didn't play nicely at all. Was playing nicely, decided not to play nicely. It's not cheating, Mike. It's using technology to its best. Yeah, just stream it all back through the computer. Let's stream it back. Lave's not on. Turn the lave on now. Now we have power. We've got the power. That's a song, isn't it? We've got the power. Morning, anybody I'm missing as I'm waffling on. Morning, hands. Yeah, stream Deck was uh, an easier way, to be fair. Um, but camera quality is not so good. Good camera quality. A10. A10. Stream Deck. Bit of messing around. Morning, Stuart. And uh, more things in the pie. I don't know. Might have to go back to doing live demos. Go to clubs. That's what it used to be about, wasn't it? Oh, blimey, waffled on so much. We're three minutes past. Let's get on with a bit of wood turning, eh? So, this morning... Got rid of me mug, I can't turn and drink coffee at the same time. This morning, if I bend down here, I've got this block of wood. Uh, it's an older block of wood, cut from a bigger block of wood that I had. Uh, it's been sitting around for ooh, six years. Um, it's developed a few big splits. I might hold that up there. A few big splits here. Um, and along here and along here but it's a nice big block of wood so what are we going to do with it well there's a couple of things rather than throw it away um we can make something out of it and we can hide the cracks different form of texturing so what i'm going to do is come over to the old if i push the right button camera one overhead I can zoom this in and out in a minute. Re-rig the camera. Can't move to all rest. Put that on there. I think you can see that quite clearly. So here are our cracks. So first we're going to just mark up our centres. No safety equipment is being worn at the moment because I'm not doing anything. So let's get a line in there. Corner to corner. Line in there. Got the old centre punch here. Just get it on that cross. Just so that points of the drives pick up nicely. This is missing a corner, so it's going to be a guesstimation somewhere around there. Don't much matter. It's going to be round in a minute, isn't it? I haven't uh, learned how to square turn yet. And there, across somewhere there. Drop them down there. Do that there. Click that on there. So that's our markers. Now, what I want to do is turn away most of these cracks. So this is going to be the top of our vessel. 
So the solid bit is going to be our mounting point. Oh, I don't know why I've got that. <laughs> I seem to have another image coming in the bottom corner, I'm being told. Duncan said check your green screen settings. Ah, hold on. Now that didn't happen in rehearsal just now. Okay. Let's try that. Ha <laughs> ha! How's that? That got rid of it. Right. So we wind this up here. Lock tail stop off. Wind this up. Now I'm using step drives to grind into the wood. Give me maximum grip. Uh, with my old knockout bar, I just do a tap in there. Just to drive that driving step home. Give this another tweak. Lock this down and then bring me tool rest in. Pidge her up and just turn her by hand to make sure we're free and clear somewhere there. That'll do it. And now we'll lock her down good and proper. So we would normally, and I will for the beginning of this, wear a face shield. If I can find it, I'll put it somewhere safe. Because as we bring this to round, we're going to have a few chips flying around. So, polycarbonate face shield. Over my head. I hope that doesn't uh, distort the camera too much. Uh, camera, microphone even. And I'm just going to find spindle roughing gouge. That all turns by hand. Make sure we're all locked down. Nice and secure. Stand out the way. Oh, stand out the way. Turn her on. Slowly advance the speed. Now we've got to be careful here because we've got obviously some cracks in this wood. So not only are we watching, we're listening out for what's going on. We're spinning at 350. Tool in my side. Back and forward along the tool rest. tool in my side and I'm just going backwards and forwards on my feet so I'm just following it along or something.
I'm gonna just stop that there and bring the tool rest up. Just there. You don't want too big a gap between your tool rest and your piece of work. We'll turn this up, whip the speed up a little bit. Same process. Right, any of you that are sharp-eyed, as I was doing that, bring tall rest up while we stop the lathe, as I'm coming down, I was rolling my wrist over to pick up the side wing in this direction, roll my wrist over and picking up the side wing in this direction. Just gave me a bit more cutting blade and also used a sharper part of the tool because this is going to, Take a little while to get round. Do you know what the wood is? Uh, the wood's a bit of sycamore, a uh, bit of sport in it, a few knots in it, ugly old bit of wood, some lovely cracks in it, proper, proper old block of wood. So, now, I'm using my little spindle roughing gouge. We could go uh, upper scale. And get this bad boy out. We'll take it to the mat. Same process. to go but not a lot there's some lovely markings in this old piece of wood a bit too close watch the flats that's it there yeah, check that crack there's a big deep crack that one yeah that's the bad one little one there but this one goes right the way down here so Get a bit more speed in the lathe. We're up to about five, six hundred.
Right, I'm just going to give this tool a quick sharpen. It's picking up on a couple of knots here and might be a bit dense. Could even just colour this piece of wood, I think. I think that's a bit dull. So let's just quick sharpen up. Better. Turn her on. Oh, look at that. That looks too good, it sounds like. Look there. Or a knot or something. for some reason might be that bit of piff it's just picking up on but it's bouncing off of it again the stupid cat can you just see it in the picture there if I uh, Zoom that out a bit. Oh, that's as much a. This is how it sits when I'm wood turning. So I either sit there or right under the lathe and get buried in shavings. Let's come back into this a little bit. There's that. Right, so. We're nearly round. That's there. Bring that back. I'm not worried about the shape of this too much at the moment i want to get it round get it into a chuck i'll just keep looking at this crack and what i might do is just put a bit of super glue in there in a minute just to make sure but that's why i'm wearing a face shield this morning One more pass to do it back the other way. And there we've got a cylinder. So let's get rid of this gouge. So now we'll get into a chuck. Um, 
and if I come over to the old side camera there, um, we're going to mark out our spigot point here, and I didn't, didn't, didn't grab a bigger chuck. Let me grab one now, I think that'll do it. So, going to use this old super precision with straight gripper drawers and we make the spigot a little bit bigger a bit deeper rather not bigger so if I measure this up I keep going the wrong way for the camera so I'm just measuring this up into here somewhere there so I'm about 56 mil jaws are open and I'm going to go down about 20 mil, so I'll put my chuck up there. And now I'm just going to come into here, left point, scribe a line. Actually, it's a bit rippled at the end. I'll just flatten that off a tad. Come round here. Come on. Let's get that into there. Put that down, it's not going to turn. That there, that'll turn. So we lock this down. Yeah, you might be better side by side. There we go. Right, you can see she's a bit out, so we'll straighten out. So I'm just grabbing my bowl gouge. Pick this up. Just pick a cut up. Raise the angle as it goes, slide her into the middle. Right up to the stead. There. That is better. Right, we're getting a bit flatter there. So now we'll mark out our line, left point in. Right there. Once I see it lining up, I can give it a push in, scribe me line. Now, can you see me line? My line is just here. Sorry? Well, if I bring it out, you get more motor as that. Pop my shield down and now we just come in, take some of this waste away. Takes a while when you're spinning slow. Something like that, probably 
not too far off our depth. I can check that. If I remember where I put my um, vernier. I've got two little tables here. Ah. You would think it wouldn't be that difficult, but I can put things down on two little tables and still lose them and pick up the wrong chuck at the same time. So, I'm just coming, you're not going to see this at all there. I'm just coming into me chuck here. Get me depth. You can see it in front of the wood on the bed. Eh? If you put it down in front of the wood on the bed there. Yeah, but then I can't get me vernier on it. That's no use, is it? Karen's advising me where to put me chuck so you can see it. What's happening with that? About there. So, I've got a depth of uh, 15 mil and I'm around about 13 mil there, which is fine because I want somewhere for this little uh, overhang which the step is holding on to, so it doesn't hit the bottom of the chuck. So I'm about there for this. So now I want to come in. And this is a parallel jaw set. It's just got teeth all the way down it. I think it will be ideal for this piece of wood. I'm just going to come in here and now bring it down to my line with me skew. Normal weight. Filled down into here, and we're sitting this cut up. Down to me pencil there. So there when I went in, I was going in square to make sure it's flat where my jaws are going to sit, which it isn't. Right, there's a bit of a hollow there. Let's see how that looks. That's better. And now I'm flat there, and I'm just going to flatten off this top. There. You said you need to zoom out the overhead. Zoom out the overhead. Zoom out the overhead. How's that? We'll go back to a, a single camera in a minute. So, I think I'm square there. Check that, it's nice and solid. So we can let off our tail stop, get that out of the way. Get that out of the way. And I'm gonna use the weight of the jaws on there to make sure she sits okay. Want me key, open the jaws up a bit. That's it on there, and I can see that I've got no fouling, and I'm just a couple of mil off the bottom of the jaws, so I can pinch this up there, and I just make sure she looks like she's sitting nice and firmly square, face of the jaws against the wood. Give it another little pinch. Get me old knocker out of here, get rid of this. Rid of the step drive, into here. Get the tail stop back, mind the tool rest. It's all technical adjustment, isn't it? Bring it over to here and we get this on.
onto there. Now I just want to lock this chuck, make sure she's sitting on the spindle properly. Just give that a tap. Get rid of that. Now give this a pinch up. I'm on end grain, so I'm not going to shear it. I can bring this down as tight as I like because I'm just crushing a bunch of straws. So unless the wood's completely rotten, I'm not going to snap this. Famous last words. There. Mike said, why a tenon and not a mortise? Why a tenon? I use tenons when you're definitely on end grain because you can crush down on them and grip it together. If you use a socket or a mortise, whatever you want to call it, in a bit of end grain like this and open it up, especially with cracks, as I open it up, I'm putting pressure on the grain and if that crack's running down there, I could open the crack up even more. With this is the cracks running down there, I'm compressing it down. So definitely end grain, crush the straws in my opinion and definitely if there's cracks in the wood right now just for safety for a minute i want to square this off this end so we can get back to a bit of speed just going to bring this up wind in the center it doesn't much matter about squaring this off really um all I'm squaring it off for is to balance up the wood so I can get a little bit more speed into the lathe. Otherwise, it will be slow motion turning all the way. So, shield down. Lathe on. Speed up. Last week, I said I thought this headstock was moving. I don't know if you remember. And this week, I can see it wobbling. Now, I don't know if it's because I've got... crap under the bed. Or under the headstock so but it's the headstock's moving it's not locking down on the bed as well as it should let me just take this off of here for a minute what I think is there's some rubbish that oh, the head shield, face shield, has just bashed the overhead camera because I've got that pulled out so I can slide it in and out on a bracket, well, on a tripod that's strapped to an overhead frame. Let's get rid of that. Let's sort this problem out. Let's bring that forward and bring the headstock round and see what's going on here. Because something is not right. That's locked into position. Let's bring that back there. Lock that down. That's better. Well, it looks better. Oh, it's just been a bit rubbish underneath there. Who's doing that? Doing that. We don't want it doing that. Right. 
Right, so I'll just turn the speed down, stand out the way, and turn it on, turn it up. That's better, huh? It was a bit of rubbish under the headstock, so it weren't the headstock weren't tightening down onto the lathe bed, and the thing was moving. Last week, I thought it was my eyesight. This week, I know it's not my eyesight. It definitely wasn't right. I should have checked it last week, really, but I've been too busy playing with software and cameras. Ah, now. Oh yeah, a bit right. Lock that up, turn that round. Right, we'll just square this up. I'll get my shield back on. I, I might go at safety specs in a minute. Turn that up. That's better off. to clear that out of there so now we'll come back over it now I'm exposing there's a crack here that comes right down into here and this crack here goes right down into there they're really really deep so what we're going to do is float a bit of glue I think I'm going to keep a face shield on for this anyway uh, and I'm going to float a bit of glue into them cracks so let's come back to the old overhead uh, which I think might be that one no it's not that one <sighs> I've lost me buttons that's overhead that's it right we're there no, we're what's happened ah my camera's out because when I put my lathe bed back, I didn't bring that to the end. Lock that down there. Turn that down, turn that on. Turn that round. Yeah, it's not moving. Right, how's that? And it's better on the overhead. That's the end camera, isn't it? That's camera two. Camera one, what is going, oh. Key off, that's better. You've got to hit the key off. Now, yeah, so I'm going to pinch that up. Now, float some super glue into these cracks. I'll grab some glue. Now, I'm going to use a thin CA so it gets down in there. There, and it's running down all over the place. Get some accelerator. Whoop! Wasn't prepared with the old super glue trick this morning. There, bit in there. This is a nasty crack here. Nasty. And so is that one. Let's get a bit in there. Work in the end. That's so why I wanted this as the uh, top. We uh, turn most of that away for the neck of our vessel. So that's 
to go out of the way. Right. Gonna have to keep wearing the face shield. This is not the best bit of wood in the world. Bring that towel stock up. Bit of support in there. So I'm gonna start turning these away. See if I can get rid of a lot of these cracks. Make sure that's all right. Turn it on. So what I'm doing now is just picking up this cup and slowly twisting the body in towards the lathe. doing that's better that's bad a bit more glue nasty crack glue in there speed up the drying In there, we'll put a bit of glue, take the lid off the glue. A little more glue on there. That's got that one. This one's not so bad now, but it's still there. So while we've got the glue out, we'll give that a spray up. Bit of glue. over there I'll put the lid on the glue because I'm quite good at knocking that over um, and now I've got glue along my tool rest sorry oh no See, not big enough for shavings um, they're a bit wide for turning safely um, that's why I'm turning slower than I would normally because um, these could open up and this we could get an explosion but I think glued up will be all right if it opens up and gets worse then we might have to abandon it but I don't abandon a lot so we'll see what happens so turn this speed on I'm just going to work back the other way for a minute We're only spinning at about 600 RPM.
what I'm doing here is I'm turning this. I'm just twisting me right hip away from the lathe as I go in and slowly raising my handle. So pick up the cut, handle forward. I'm turning away and creating a flange at the bottom because that's going to be our dead wood for parting off. So this area here is going to be our waste wood. We don't want this. So I'm going to create a shoulder in about here where this darker area is. That will be my sort of finishing line for my polyform vase vessel. I'm just going to come back in clear a bit of that away so I can get my cutter in here Thanks very much, Pat. It's very kind of you. So I've come back the other way now. To balance out my shape. Uh, what I'm looking at doing is getting my shape in thirds. Two thirds at the bottom, one third at the top. I know I've got this line. I could have carried on at one end, but what I was trying to do is let this glue go off in these cracks. So I think we're much better there. I can, can't quite get my finger now in there. So the glue's doing its job. It's sealing it over. While I've stopped it, I'm going to stick another bit of glue in here. I'm not too worried about the cracks. What I would do normally, this would have been a oliform. Oh, you've got me face shield up in the camera. Um, but with the integrity of this wood. I don't think I'll hollow it. Um, it's only a demo piece. It was more about the adding texture. So um, I don't think we'll hollow it because I don't think the depth of these cracks, if I get in and start hollowing, then I think it will just come in too because the cracks there this one this side seems to have disappeared and there's a bit of one there so this section i think would come boom, flying out so 
on a serious note, if you turn the piece of wood like this and you see a couple of cracks where a segment could come flying out, um, I think you would call it a day and go and find another piece of wood if you're going to holler it. Um, there's no uh, reason that we have to hollow things. The trouble with using super glue like this is it gets all over your lathe, it's all over my handle here, everything. So I just want to clean that off a little bit. a bit of 600 grit ping that off of there get that off the bed you can hear it go crunch might be able to flick it off with the end of the ruler there that's got it it's where it was spinning out Got it. Bit of lathe maintenance, bit of tool rest maintenance. Just get that glue off of there. It doesn't matter about the inside so much, that bit there. Yeah. Bit of lathe maintenance as well, all thrown in. So, so you know, if you've got cracks that look like they could join up and cause you some damage, then maybe this is not the piece of wood to turn. But we're going to carry on for this little project. But just be careful, watch your wood. I was concentrating there. Yeah, be careful. Watch your wood. It don't matter if you pay 20, 30 quid for it, 40 quid for it. It really doesn't matter. If you start getting into a piece of wood and there's problems there, don't think, oh, this has cost me 30, 40 quid, whatever. I've, I've got to turn something out of it. Think about your safety first and think, that might go bang. I ain't going to use that bit of wood. That, that can go in the firewood pile. Or use it like this. Create an outside shape, glue it up well, and mess around with the outside. Don't bother hollering it. I just want to bring this in now. Make this curve sort of flow at the moment it wouldn't flow so I'm going to back here or bring it up to looking at this form I think I've got to take this back to about here so it flows round you look at the horizon and that will give you your shape so let's pick up that pencil line It's a bit crunchy, I'm just pushing wood away. There, and now I'm just going to bring this, pick this up.
Fefea. that cut just around there just tip this up there's that cut somewhere there got a little bump there little bump there but we're getting down to a rough shape to make it look right forget about that bit that would go I'm just going to bring the tool rest back along, just adjust it up now, uh, and then pick up another tool, and then just give a nice fine cut. When I pick the cut up, I literally can rub the back of the bevel anywhere, and then bring my handle towards me, a little raise. Somewhere there. I'm just going to come back the other way now, just pick up a cart. that there back of the bevel lean the angle forward into there bring the tool rest round bump there so it flows sort of the curve there and we've got bump here so we just got to tidy that up I'm just going to bring the side of the gouge in and that back with the forward there just refining the shape now Right, so we need to bring this round a bit more. Just using the wing of the tool now to brush this around. Go back that way a bit. Back 
put that and I'll blend that in. Just brushing the cutting edge very gently. That flows. Now just coming round here. There, and I'll just uh, bring that back there. All I'm concerned about really is the shape. I'm not not going to worry too much about the finish. Not at this stage. We just want the shape to look pleasing and there's no shoulders so our curves flow. Um, you can probably see there. Let's see if we can zoom in on that a bit. It's the shape I'm interested in rather than. So let's see if we can slide that back a bit. Oop, I've hit a button. That's it. I'm just looking at this curve here to flow. Have I gone the wrong, I've gone the wrong way. He's gone the wrong way with that bloody camera. It's come out a bit. We want this curve to flow and make a nice shape. So we just got a little bump there, but we're getting there. And to be quite honest, there's nothing there that a bit of sandpaper wouldn't take out. So let's just come round and tidy this up. Just using the side of the tool, the wing of the tool. Better. So somewhere there. So that'll be our shape. So then what we'll do if I was gonna hollow this, which I'm deciding I'm not gonna hollow this. A for a demonstration, it's not the end of the world if you don't see a bit of hollowing. Um but B I'm not too keen with these big cracks this one's coming right back round here now and this one's deepening down through there so i think with a bit of hollowing this would definitely fly in half but just to give you an idea of the shape got my shield down let's get rid of that For a minute i just want to get rid of this pip and then it'll give you more of a visual shape so 
with Ted Owe. Put that down. Red stop, everybody, red stop. So, I would now obviously drill down through here and then start fishing it out. Um, I can make a decision, do I want this to come off or come in a little bit more or whatever. This crack here is opening up and coming right round here and coming back to here. So it's coming back on itself. Hold on, let me go. I'm pointing, you can't see, camera two. Right, so this crack is coming down here, coming back on itself, so it's deep into the wood. This crack is opening up and coming round here and coming along here. So this is a definite piece of wood not to hollow. All that's going to happen with that is those cracks are going to join up and it's going to go ba bang. That's why I've been turning it so slow. Uh, central fugal force would open them up even more and we'd definitely get a bang on our hands with this piece of wood, so we're not going to worry about that. If I was turning a piece of wood like this and I wanted it as a finished article from here, I can do my decoration, which we're about to do, and I could then just drill a hole down through the middle, get a uh, a lamp head, put a lamp head on here, bring this neck in a bit to fit me lamp head, lamp head on there, bring it down, drill the hole down through the middle so I can get a bit of cable in, and I could do something with this bit of waste wood here. Let's go side by side. Uh, I could do something with this bit of waste wood here to make a little base and I'd make a table lamp out of it if I was that desperate to save the piece of wood. Um, if you make table lamps, then you've got to get the electrics chested properly and have a pack test and all that sort of thing. I'll mention that. Just don't go making table lamps and think you can sell them at craft fairs. They're not pack tested. You can't do that. Right. So... That's what I would do, but we we won't worry about that. We're going to go on to um, what we were going to do, add in texture. So I've got these cracks here that are nasty. So what I'm going to do is super glue these cracks, but this time with a thick super glue. Should we come back overhead? Uh, key off. Camera one, overhead, zoom in a bit, zoom, 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 and I think I butted the camera, I just want to get there, right, so I've got some thick CA that I'm going to put into these cracks. Now, I'm using thick CAA now because all I'm trying to do is fill the crack. I'm not worried about the glue getting down inside it. I want to fill the cracks so that I, the crack don't show through. And we're holding that off. I was going to touch that with my finger. Stupid boy. Stupid, stupid boy. 
does that mean I'd be covered in super glue? So, let's get a bit of the old paper towel and give that a push. Make sure that's all right. Now I can just use my finger now to make sure that's why I weren't using my finger. It created a blister with glue underneath it. I see that there. And that cracks filled with the thick CA, so that's that one. With the other nasty crack just there, so we'll see if we can get some thick CA into there. Of course, cool, so I could put in, uh, open them up a bit and fill them with mini part or a two part epoxy resin. Fixie A are old this for what we are aiming to do or what I'm aiming to do. You're aiming to find out what's it what's he gonna do now then? I don't know. We'll find out in a minute. Could you use a staircase mule post top? Could I? Use a staircase mule post top. Could I? Yeah. You can use anything. <laughs> it's a bit of wood. Why not? Some of the nicest things uh, are the old oak posts that they have out doors or in properties like we live in that uh, ages old and when they come down you get them they look all craggy and horrible just trying to get that glue in there. If we really want to get that in there properly the best idea would be to take this off the lathe, turn it upright, and feed the glue in from the top. I'm trying to feed glue in that way from the side. Not the best plan, but yeah. Let's get that in there. Right, that's filled that crack. Okay, so we've now got this it is a nice looking piece of wood apart from them big cracks, but them big, it looked lovely. It's got all uh, ripple in here. Um, sanded up, but what we can do is we could then sand this round roughly 80 grit or do just to get it finished, but we're not going to do that because we're going to cover it. So, Actually, we are going to do that because if I don't put a, a, an 80 grit of sand on it, a little sand on it, what will happen is the marks are going to just show through the top coat of the paint. So let's get the extractor on. Karen's walked off to answer her phone. Karen walked off to answer a phone, not her phone. Someone's phone in the shop. Don't they know they shouldn't phone on a Saturday morning? I'll put my face shield down somewhere safe. I've got the extractor on, a bit of 80 grit. Let's just get rid of a bit of this. I'm not taking any chances, my face shield is still down.
Turn around there, I've got the cat under my foot. That'll do for that. So, add in texture without texturing tools. You can do all sorts of things. Um, now, what I'm proposing to do is barking mad, but that's nothing unusual. What I did uh, this morning while Mrs. Oliver was asleep, widen that out a bit. While Mrs. Oliver was asleep, I invaded the kitchen. So, what did I invade the kitchen for? Well, I invaded the kitchen for a food processor. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some sawdust. I don't want big shavings, so I thought, how do I grind that up? I'll get Mrs. Oliver's food processor. She doesn't keep a very tidy house, if you can see the state of this food processor. Only joking. Um, eh? No, I've had it in the workshop. This is my workshop food processor. So I'm just mashing up my shavings to make them into a definite sawdust. A bit like coffee beans really, give it a shake around, turn it off and then I've got some shavings there. Now I can make up loads of these shavings, might need a few more, so let's get a few more in here, put the lid on. Turn that on. Do a shake up. This is not like cooked with fluid, you know. Right. Oh, look at that. Lovely. So we've got some shavings. We might need some more shavings in a minute. We'll see. I should have a board on there. I don't know what I've done with my board. But that'll do me for a minute. Now, I'll show you a, a piece of work in a bit. But the best way to do this is to use epoxy resin and put it on. Uh, now what I'm going to do is come over the top of my crack because that's one area that I definitely, definitely want to hide. And I can come round in a sort of pattern of some description, hide that straight line coming through it. There. And then I'll give it some shavings. Come over come in with another dollop of glue this is the fixia bit like hot milk really I've got enough shavings in there I hope so Gonna need some more shavings. This is a great way to use your shavings up. Where's my magic mix? 
Now, of course, you don't have to use shavings. You could use anything. You could use beads, whatever. I just thought it'd be funny using shavings. Oh, my magic mix is packed up. No, it hasn't. I would suggest shaking it up while it's running is not the safest thing in the world. So, don't do it. Best idea is have it on a bit of board and feed a few in through the top. But, yeah, they look all right. Good blender shavings there. Soup glue on there, a few shavings on there. Lovely. Got enough shavings there, a bit more glue. A few more shavings. shavings a bit more glue now you could draw a pattern on here and go over the pattern with your glue you could do anything really a few more shavings oh, I need a few more shavings last thing for the magic mix Back on with the badgy mix. And to me, my magic mix has died. What am I going to do? Oh no, it's all right. So you could use little beads, um, Del Monte crystals, whatever you like really. Um, now, a bit of shaving. And then you can just carry on building that up. And now we've got a textured base. And if we then get our ebonizing lacquer. Find the cameras.
I'm just going over this and making sure that I've covered my shavings so people can't see that there's shavings. People will know now because I've given out one of my biggest trade secrets on what to do with your shavings free of charge. I don't care. Hey. Thank you very much, Derek. Thank you very much, Paul. Very kind of you. Thank you. I've just gone round that and I'm just going round to make sure I've got the black in so we don't see the shavings. Now sand it up properly and gloss round. You can get a real nice gloss finish with this sort of mosaic of texture without a texturing tool on your piece of work right this is just for an effect to show you there and if i take that off the lathe there is he barking mad yep oh yeah oh yeah let me know you're barking mad. Gotta be mad to be a wood turner. In my little world, it helps. So, if I take that off there, I'm not holding it because, um, let me, uh, yeah, bring this over. Hold on, bring this over to here, out your way, there. And if we go onto the intro camera there there so if i bring that up you can see that you've created a texture that you've hidden up by paint um and you can do whatever you like with it realistically um but that's a way of adding texture without texturing with tools now i've messed around with this about six years ago uh, and this is one of the pieces that I did about six years ago, if I bring that back from the camera. Um, it's gold and silver. It's been sitting in a workshop for years. Um, and what I did is I coated the thing in epoxy resin and put the shavings on. Uh, and then just coated it in a colour. You could add a colour carefully just airbrush it lightly against the shavings, but it's just a way of doing something a bit different, why not? And that is our texturing colour. So, I hope you've enjoyed this morning's demonstration. Sorry we didn't do a bit of hollering, but it wouldn't have been a safe demo hollering out that uh piece of wood for certain it wasn't great to be fair and i didn't realize the cracks were quite as bad as that but i knew it was cracked so once you get down to it i'm covered in super glue here so um i hope you've enjoyed your morning yeah a lot of stick with paint on would look good so uh yeah, so I hope you enjoyed your morning. Do that and do this. Uh, what I'd like you to do, thank you very much, Roy, is just please like, subscribe, and share the love. Thank you. Come back to me, intro camera, a little video dunk shot for me. So I put that up, so like, subscribe and subscribe. Um, subscribe even, subscribe. Subscribe, subscribe. Um, 
yeah, so you can mess around with this. Thank you very much, Martin. It's very kind of you. Thank you all for the donations. Much appreciated. Um, it's just a way of adding something to your work. It doesn't have to be shavings. You could do an arty pattern drawn on there and with glue use little uh, coloured beads or something on top of a base layer of colour. Uh, you could add, do almost anything. You know, you could bring material into the wood. Whatever. Whatever you like. Um, but it's just different when you're uh, doing your sort of shows and that. Something that's different, and if you can hide it up with some paints and that, people look at it and think, oh, what's that? They're taking a closer look. So uh, that's it. Thank you very much, David. Thank you. Very kind of you. Um, so that's a way to texture without a texturing tool. Uh, you do get a bit careful, get covered in glue if you're not too... Uh, tidy about it like I've been I've got a knuckle full of glue I've got fingers full of glue I've got a lathe full of glue and where I spun where I spun that piece of wood it looks like I've got glue on my screen I'll have to flick that off a bit later on so been a good morning had fun uh, there's, yeah, there's something else to do with the shavings now that's the way to look at it. Um, a few more demos on this weekend. I know Mike's on Sunday night. Pat Carroll's on Sunday night. I think there's a Conkers thing tonight. I don't know what else is going on. You guys probably know more than me. I sort of see bits and pieces. To be quite honest, for last week, what I've been doing is messing around with software and cameras and microphones and camera stands and all sorts of stuff like that so uh some of it's been quite good fun and some of it's been uh quite frustrating as you do but still so i hope you had a good weekend um so i'll sit and look at some of the comments for a minute if anybody's got any questions far away i'm happy to try and answer them in some way shape or form and if I don't know the answer, someone else on the chat might, my mate. So, so said de bonda, de yeah. I keep my workshop. A lot of you have not been to my workshop. A few of you have been to my workshop. My workshop's got a fully fitted kitchen. I've got an oven for baking wax to do the uh, blanks and for baking wood. And so I've got a microwave to kill worm, to bake wood, to dry wood out. I've got a full kitchen sink, uh, and that is so I keep the mess in the workshop rather than in the kitchen indoors or the utility indoors. Uh, and I've got a cupboard full of little electrical appliances like Magi Mix for grinding stuff up. You can grind up colours and stuff like that, you know. Um, so, yeah. Sherry says there's no conkers live tonight. No conkers live. Oh, there's no Conkers live tonight. I don't know when it is. Perhaps tell me and put it in the chat for you. Um, I got my dates wrong. Oh, get everything wrong, really. Because you used chestnut today. Yeah, everything used today was chestnut because I only used ebonizing. Oh no, ebonizing lacquer and chestnut super glue. So yeah. Thanks for stopping by, Hands. I'm reading the screen now because if I look at the camera like this so you see me, I can't read the screen which is there. Maybe I'll have the screen directly below the camera. Don't just do that. All right, Hodgepodge is doing a demo in 25 minutes. Um, Cheers, Paul. Thanks for stopping by. Twelfth of April is the next chestnut products, and our old mate Stuart is doing a demo. So, if everybody's happy, uh, the chat seems to have slowed down. So I think everybody's uh, there. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, 
ring the bell uh, ringing the bell means you see when a video is coming up so uh, once I get these cameras sorted out I've had a lot of people asking me uh, about lessons because I do quite a lot of teaching and um, so once these cameras are sorted out I will be teaching remotely I've got a few bits of this and that to do bring in a new microphone these uh, demos on the last two Saturdays have been tests for the new equipment and I'm tweaking and messing around so um, I'll be starting a, a teaching in the very near future once I know that this is all very stable thanks Colin thanks for stopping by John Smith thank you you're going to buy me a cream tea at Yandles. Cheers, John. Um, what about cream tea? Ice cream. Oh, ice cream. I'll have cream tea. No, I'll have ice cream, really. Uh, right. So, everybody, have a good weekend. Stay safe. Keep out of the way of the dreaded coronavirus. Numbers are on the rise. Nothing to do with schools going back, obviously. Not. Uh, thanks very much, Baz. Thanks for stopping by. Thank you all for stopping by. Enjoyed your company. Hope you've had a good time. And I'll see you the next time we're live. Take care and goodbye. Cheers, Tony. Goodbye.